welcome to the Kitchen and Jorn Show. It's a very special episode special. where we talk about feelings. feelings. More specifically, my feelings. Your feelings. My special, precious feelings. Feelings. Feel- <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about something that I've been kind of experiencing slash I guess going through um, over the last I want to say almost a year. This is something I've talked about openly on Twitter and on Instagram but it's something I've never talked about in videos and so I wanted to make a video about it because honestly a video is just the easiest way to disseminate information. I can always just point to a video because what happens is people in comments will be like, why are you talking about this? This makes no sense to me. And you hit them with that link. The thing that I want to talk about right now is being indigenous and how it's awesome uh, and how I am a reconnecting indigenous person. And sort of the broad strokes of how that came to pass. Obviously this is my story, but Jen is here because Jen actually has kind of been present for a lot of it. Uh, And also she's my friend and I want her support. This is a very long story. I'm not gonna tell the whole story, mostly because we would be here for a long time and I I just don't want to tell that story in a video. I kind of just want to give y'all some cool fun information that will, you know, help you understand me a little bit better. So there will be parts of this story I sort of gloss over or don't talk about as much. That's on purpose. Um, I'll share that when I feel like it's time to share it. Until then, you, you can, you know, put- Please be respectful of boundaries. Yeah, uh, yes. Please be respectful of boundaries. I would say the thing that I don't really want to see in the comments is a lot of questions asking for details I have not given. I'm not going to answer those, <laughs> so don't, don't. However, if you're like an indigenous person and you want to like hit me up, Please, the whole point of talking about this is to befriend more native folks and talk to them. If you're not a native person, I, you know, Google is your friend. (laughs) Please, please Google. So that's caveat one. Caveat two is this. I am still very new to this. I've really only been in this experience for the last year. That means I'm maybe going to mess some stuff up. It happens. I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can with the knowledge I have. The great thing about the native experience that I know so far is that like, there are hundreds of different nations. Um, You're not just reconnecting to being a native person, you're reconnecting to like a specific people. And all those like different nations have different cultures, different uh, social mores and prefer different words. I'm probably gonna mess some stuff up. I'm still learning. I'm trying my best. I'll say this too, my experience is unique to me. It is not everyone's experience. You you guys assume that I mean well, (laughs) so I appreciate that. So let's start the story. You're probably wondering, wow, Kristen, that seems like it came out of nowhere. Well, it actually didn't. Uh, (laughs) I just didn't talk about it. Um, Let's start at the very beginning. My mom has maintained her whole life that she is native. I didn't really know what that meant. I kind of didn't really understand the details of it. She was adopted. We're not gonna get super into that in that video, but just know that she was adopted um, and it was a thing. When I got a little older and I sort of learned more things about how the lore of having like a a native ancestor kind of gets passed down um, in white families, I started to think that maybe, you know, it wasn't necessarily true. I didn't talk about it. That was a really specific choice. I, for a long time, didn't really understand a lot about it. I didn't think it was my place to talk about it. I thought talking about it was inappropriate. I kind of was like, "Uh, this is not really something I should get into. It just kind of, it seemed like it was a mystery box full of things I didn't want to open. And so I just uh, sort of ignored it, pushed it aside, pretended like it, it didn't exist, but it was always there. And it was always something where I wondered, you know, I didn't know anything about my mom's biological family. I always thought like, oh, I'll I'll never find out anything about this. It's just a mystery forever. Fast forward to you, and this involves you. (laughs) You uh, Fast forward to, we did this 23andMe video at uh, BuzzFeed for Mm -hmm. Ladylike. Mm -hmm. And I think you produced that video. I did produce it. And actually I remember 
when we were filming the intros. I actually told this to Jen off camera because I was like, eh. I told her basically like, I, I think there might be some, you know, native like ancestry in my family, but like, I'm not sure. And like, I don't really want to say it on camera if it's not true. Cause like, I know there are lots of white people who, you know, like to claim like, and it's not real. I, I was really anxious about it. And I think what we decided was like, I would talk about it, but if it didn't end up being true, we just like wouldn't include it yeah. in the video. And, and granted, like this was a situation where my mom is adopted. So I genuinely didn't know. Yeah. This wasn't like a, I know all these people and you know, it seemed pretty obvious that this was, you know. Fake. Fake or family lore or right. like not true. It was like, this is a mystery. It's yeah. a mystery box. So I figured, you know, it was like worth recording. And then <laughs> we did the tests and it was like, oh, okay. I guess this is true. This is an aside. DNA tests are extremely complicated things and not very well liked in the native community for a lot of different reasons. Tied specifically to blood quantum, which is a very problematic way that uh, people choose to evaluate nativeness in people. Blood quantum is basically like, how, it's like when someone says like, how native are you? And you're just like, I am like one eighth or something like that. Like that's your blood quantum. Right. It's how we talk about like native people and also like puppies. Like she's like half schnauzer. Blood quantum is like, it's a very much a colonialist construct. It's kind of used to separate like native people from their culture and eventually like genocide them out through, you know, declining blood quantum. I am not an expert on this. If that was like a bad explanation, I'm really sorry. But basically blood quantum is bad. Native people do not like DNA tests. This isn't like an invitation where it's like, guess what? You can do this too through DNA tests. I'm telling this because this was part of the story. It's a very sp specific special circumstance. No. It's you not know. an endorsement of DNA tests. It's not to prove indigenousness. They can be helpful in really specific instances in which adopted people find out information and like that leads them to research more. After we took this test, I was like, oh, my mom is telling the truth. Um, now what? Uh, and the answer to now what was uh, for a few years, nothing. <laughs> it was uh, do nothing. Uh, mostly because I kind of was like, I felt a lot of guilt. I felt like it wasn't appropriate. I felt like I was taking something that wasn't mine. I just ignored it basically. Yeah. I just ignored it because I, I didn't know what to do with the information. I didn't even have the language to understand how to make sense of what I now knew about myself. Like I, I didn't even know where to start Googling. Because the thing is, if you Google, if you Google DNA tests Native American, there are some um, nations that very kindly say like, the DNA test doesn't make you native. You should find out who you're related to. Well, I kind of was just like, you're right, it's not. I, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know is the, is the best way to put it. Yeah. So I just kind of shelved it. Um, but it was always there. It was always there and I never forgot it. And like, I would be lying if I said I didn't like check my 23andMe results. Cause like if you've gotten 23andMe results like several years ago, check them again. Cause actually your percentages will be different because they update the percentages. As they get more people as they get data people. sample. Yeah. So like I would check it every so often and I would check the relatives and be like, who's related to my mom? And like, wow, it seems like my percentage of like native ancestry is going up. And like, it just, I didn't talk about it, but it's something that was like always in the back of my mind. But I also felt guilty about it. It was just a lot of like, being curious, but also being, feeling guilty and just, you know, I, I had a lot of feelings. Yeah. And I didn't talk about it at all. Yeah. Like, I mean, I tell you everything and I don't think- It, it came up in like, where you would sort of articulate what you just articulated now, which is like, you were like, it's something I think about, but like, I don't know where to start and I don't know how to start. Yeah. Anyway, fast forward. We're in the pandemic. I want to say this is early, early 2021. I knew I wanted to start working on a book. Um, but I didn't know what I wanted the book to be about. And it was like, I could write honestly four books. I've had like a bunch of weird. You've had a bunch of different lives. I've had a bunch of different lives. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was trying to thread a bunch of different things together. It wasn't really working. I have this one anecdote about my mom, which I'll tell now. But when I was like a teenager, my mom and I got into kind of a tussle of some kind. Afterwards, 
she called me into the kitchen and she had made a turkey sandwich and it was sitting on a plate in front of me. And she said to me, I'll make you a deal. You can have this turkey sandwich if you promise to never write a tell-all book about me. And I ate the sandwich. <laughs> and that was like, that was the preamble to my book that I pitched. And my, my book agent was just like, that's such a fat, it's, it's, first of all, it's really funny. It's a really fascinating dynamic. It's a really fat, it's like, it's such a, it tells such a story. She's like, I wanna hear more about your mom. Cause I feel like there's a lot there. I started kind of noodling about it. Cause I want to talk about my mom. Cause like my mom is a very interesting person. The part of me that I think you all like is my mom. Like I think like the personality that like is likable is my, this is all my mom. This is not my dad. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad is the part of me that like pays my bills on time. I look like my mom. And that's the other thing is that I was thinking a lot about how like, I, I have a very large extended family on my dad's side. I don't look like any of those people. Mm -hmm. um, I look exactly like my mom. And my mom was kind of the only elder relative who looked like me. Yeah. And it was like, huh, that's, it would be nice to look like more elders. But you know, I filed that feeling away. Anyway, I was working on this book proposal and I was trying to talk about my mom. I kind of got stuck because my mom was adopted, but it was like, how do I talk about my mom's adoption? Because my mom was adopted like in the 60s and it was like, eh, it's, it's a story that we won't get into, but it, I think it's a very formative experience. And it was just kind of like, I, I got kind of stuck on how to talk about it. I think I talked to you. Yeah. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. And you're just like, why don't you reach out to some like native people and consult with them about how to talk about this? Uh, and I was like, good idea, Jen, you're so smart. <laughs> and meanwhile, while this is happening, uh, Rutherford Falls season one is airing on Peacock. And I watched it and was just like, it's, this is me. Her name's Regan, but Jana's character in that show like looks like me, obviously and kind of sounds like me, but it just, I kind of saw her and was just like, I feel a connection to this character and this person and I can't really articulate why, but that feels like a ridiculous thing to say to anyone. So I'm just gonna hold that in. My brain was like, Kristen. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that's happening in the meantime. Um, and then I reached out to some people on Twitter and basically offered to pay them to kind of answer some questions for me. And one person I talked to, the first thing that she asked me was like, well, have you thought about reconnecting with your uh, indigenousness and your native family? And I was like, nope, <laughs> I have never considered that. I didn't know that was a thing, tell me more. And this person very graciously was like, you know, I've kind of been hoping that you would do this ever since I saw your 23andMe video. Like, I think that it might be like really healing for you. It's funny looking at that conversation. Cause I was like, I feel like I shouldn't do this. And she's like, why not? Like this is, you're not being connected to these people, to your ancestors, to your family is how colonialism wins. Yeah. My friend was like, my friend who, she was my friend now. Yeah, yeah. We started consulting, she became my friend. Yeah. And my friend was just like, this belongs to you. Like it is yours. You are allowed to have it. Anyone who's telling you that you're not allowed to have it is reinforcing colonialism and imperialism and, 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 and you know, ethnic genocide. It's, you know, it's yours. it's yours. And you were disconnected from it. And the reason why you don't know this stuff is because you were disconnected from it. And by reconnecting to it, you're honoring your ancestors, you're honoring your family, you're healing those broken bonds, you're healing that break in culture, you're repairing something that was lost. And I had never even considered that. I would never considered that it might be a responsibility of mine to reconnect. Yeah. It is also, it's also a privilege, but in, Another sense it is a responsibility because I'm, I have a responsibility to my ancestors to keep their culture alive. I think the, the dumb question here is like, well, if you're reconnecting to your nativeness, why can't you reconnect to like your other parts of yourself, like your Italianness? And it's like, I've been connected to those parts my whole life. That connection's unbroken. Your last name is Cherico. My last name is Cherico. I am connected to the, like, I don't need to actively reconnect to that because I'm already connected to it. Your dad's name is Tony. My dad's name is Tony and his dad's name was Tony. You've seen The Sopranos multiple times. You're connected. It's there. It, that's, I'm connected. Italians to are fine. Yeah, it's so it's, I think like that's the thing is that 
This is a part of this is a part of my identity. Identity. This is a part of my identity that had been lost. And now I'm trying to work to reconnect with it. I talked to uh, another person who now also is a friend um, who was like, you know, I think that you need, in, but the first thing you need to do before you write about your mom's adoption is you need to find out if you are indigenous and where your people are, where you come from. Cause you're not connecting to the idea of nativeness. You're connecting to a specific tribe, a specific nation. I was like, okay, well then let's figure out Let's figure out who my family is. One day, Jen and I were sitting in this kitchen and we did not want to work. Specifically, <laughs> Jen did not want to work. Jen was like, I don't really feel like doing anything today. Mm, maybe we should figure out who your family is instead. <laughs> okay, is that maybe? Is yeah, that... yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, that's kind of, but you were excited about it. Oh, no, no, I was, I was. I was excited about it. It was just, I think you were just like, mm. I won't tell the whole story of this, but basically like, you know, we signed up for like, we signed up for some archive sites. We started digging. I think you were the one who found it. Yeah. Oh, I found the, I found the newspaper article. Basically you found, well, no, but you found the first newspaper article and then you found the grave site. Yeah, I did. Yeah. That's why Jen's here. <laughs> but yeah. So basically to cut like a very long story short, I was able to, con I was able to figure out who these people were like in a day. <laughs> it was actually pretty simple. Um, like the amount of information you had at the beginning of the day to like 48 hours later was, oh, was like, night I mean, and day. Yeah, like uh, probably 900% more information, if not more. My maternal grandfather uh, was Cayuga. Um, and the Cayuga are a part of the Haudenosaunee. His mom and dad were Cayuga and Seneca, respectively. Uh, but the Haudenosaunee, which is the, uh, what, more commonly is known as the Iroquois, uh, but that we call the Haudenosaunee, uh, is like the Six Nations. Uh, the Haudenosaunee are matrilineal, and so the uh, your nation is passed down through your mother. Mm -hmm. Because of that, my grandfather was Cayuga, even though his father was Seneca and his mom was Cayuga. I mean, the sad part is because the Haudenosaunee are matrilineal, um, it means that like my mom, because it was her father, my mom like can't enroll. Uh, and I can't enroll, um, which sucks, <laughs> but I mean, that is, it is what it is. I've been thinking a lot, like, what is my identity? Like, I guess I'm Cayuga because that was, my grandfather was Cayuga. Um, but like, you know, if we're thinking about it in terms of like an even split, like I'm sort of as Seneca as I am Cayuga. So, which is all under like the Haudenosaunee, which is the Six Nations. Um, I could tell you the Six Nations of the Haudenosaunee. Also, this is gonna sound, this is gonna be a lot of information. <laughs> and you're not gonna remember it all, but it's okay. It's the Mohawk, the Seneca, the Cayuga, the Onondaga, the Tuscarora, and the Oneida. And I've, if I pronounce that wrong, I'm so sorry. And I also didn't do that in order, cause like the Mohawk are the farthest east and the Seneca are the farthest west. But yeah. That. That's cool. So the Haudenosaunee, or the Iroquois as mm -hmm. you know them, um, but call them the Haudenosaunee, are what we know of as upstate New York. Today, like the Cayuga live in three different areas. They live uh, in Ontario, which I believe in the, I wanna say the Five Nations. I'm so sorry if I messed this up. They also live in the Cayuga Nation of New York. They do not have their own reservation. Uh, and then they also live uh, in Oklahoma as part of the Seneca Cayuga Nation. There's lots more to that, but like, that's, I mean, my grandfather was born just off the reservation in like, I think 1918. Um, but like, yeah, my, I, I, yeah, you saw, I mean, I'm looking at Jen cause Jen actually saw all these records and like read them all. That was the first thing I did was I found out all this information. And then I think something you said that was wild that didn't occur to me was there was a whole family tree on like ancestry for my extended family. And you said to me like, Kristen, I think that like whoever put together this family tree is looking for you. Yeah. I think that they know that you're missing and they want to find you. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, so I reached out to the person who made the family tree. Um, she like actually <laughs> reached out to me on Twitter cause she saw me um, posting photos of my maternal grandfather. And she was just like, that's my maternal grandfather. <laughs> and I was just like, well, then we are cousins. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and uh, her name is Chelsea, and she introduced me to my other cousin, um, Jennifer. And like, we've been chatting and it's super cool. It's like, you know, I mean, it's, it's hard. Like there's a lot, like there's a lot of trauma and sadness and like it's, this is a light video. This is just like an instructional light video. So we're just talking about the light aspects of this, but it's like, you know, it's fascinating to find people who look like you and who share your history. It like kind of reaffirmed the idea that like, I was raised by a native person. I am a native person. My cousins and I kind of joke that like, you know, we've been experiencing sort of the negative parts of intergenerational trauma without like the positive parts of reconnecting to your culture. And it's like, well, if I can experience the bad parts, why am I not entitled to reconnect with the good parts? <laughs> <laughs> and then I decided to start talking about it on like Twitter and Instagram. Mm. I was very worried about that. Cause I, what I didn't want is for people to be like, you're just trying to use this for blah, blah, blah. And it's like, honestly, it felt like there was a hole inside me for a long time. And being able to experience and talk about this part of my identity like it feels like I'm healing that hole. Finding community and finding connection to like my culture feels very healing. healing. Yeah. It feels very healing. And like, that's, you know, I, I've talked to, I've made so many friends. I've talked to like so many people who also agree that it is very healing. A friend of mine, uh, Jamie actually, uh, who belongs to like the Seneca Cayuga Nation. Hi Jamie. Uh, she sent me some plants like some medicines and stuff like that. And like, she wrote me a note that said like, one thing that you might experience is that like the plants know you and you know them. And like, you might feel like a strong emotional reaction to it. Like, cause it might feel like you're returning to something and it's true. And like, I'm not like a very woo woo person, obviously. I, that's my dad. <laughs> that's the dad side of me. What's up Tony? What's up Tony? <laughs> the Italian in me is not very woo woo, but like, it's true, like I felt like a very strong reaction where it was like, oh, I'm returning home to something that I didn't know I was missing. I am what we would call like a white native. Uh, Cause you know, look at me. Um, <laughs> but like one thing that I did find is like lots of people were reaching out to me to be like, I'm also like indigenous or I'm also native who had like my facial features, who have my brow and my nose and my chin and like my eyes. The facial features that I've spent my life and many videos talking about how I don't like, talking to people who I guess look like me in the face was also like very healing. It also like felt better. Um, and like, you know, I, I say this alongside the fact that like, I do enjoy white privilege. I was not raised like on like a reservation or like anything like that. I have privileges and those privileges do not go away because of this. But a lot of the pain that I've experienced now has a larger context. And now I get to experience the joy that like, should be there instead of that pain, if that makes sense. That makes complete sense. I talk about this because it's like, you know, it, Native people experience tremendous amounts of intergenerational trauma. If like you are a reconnecting Native, there's a pretty good chance that you've experienced that trauma too. So why not also enjoy the joys of your culture? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like what? Why do you, why, I, uh, it makes sense to me. It's like, what part of me is Native then? Yeah. Like. I'm just native. Like I am all of my identities simultaneously. Yeah. People don't ever like go, well, you're half your mom and half your dad. Like you're both of your, you're your parents' kid. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I feel like it, it's like, but we do that with ethnicity, which is really bizarre. It's so strange. This has just been something that's been like tremendously fulfilling to me. I'm still learning a lot. Mm. I'm learning about how blood quantum sucks and I'm learning about how tribal enrollment is like a messy, messy, messy situation and disenrollment's a messy situation. 
and Native adoptions are ridiculous and messy. Another part of me also like wants to like give back to my community because my community has given so much to me. They've been like really warm and welcoming and helped me learn things and answered my questions. I now have a billion beaded earrings and like I know like where like the hot beaded earring drops are gonna happen. You got some nice I'm effing nice, earrings. Yeah, I know. You got some I'm, nice I'm not earrings. wearing them right now, but like I, I didn't. I, I kind of thought it would be over the top. I was just like, hello. I think that like my community has given a lot to me and so I, I feel grateful that I'm in a position that I could also give back to them. And that's something yeah. that I want to do too, because like that's part of being in a community. You don't just take, you also give. And sorry, go ahead. I don't know, I was going to make a joke about how we should all be pegging our communities. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just receive. Jen's just kind of been here along this journey and helping me process and being like, eh, because like this was a, both a major shift in my identity and also filling in a piece that was just kind of missing, like making me feel like a more full, well-rounded person, no pun intended. But <laughs> yes. You do seem happier. Yeah, I know? do. I feel happier. I love learning about my culture. I love learning about my people. Oh, oh, do you remember the day? In the Kai, I think I put this on Twitter. The Cayuga language app, I was going through it and I was like, la 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 la, interesting. And then on culture notes, there's this picture of like these two women and the one on the left looks like just like me. And I like, my brain like went f bananas. Uh, yeah, it's- yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> It feels so affirming. It feels like I said I have such a, a profound sense of belonging. And like granted, I have a long road to go. Reconnecting is a lifelong process. You know, you're never really done. I'm sure I'll make mistakes. I'm sure there's things in this video I've said that native people will be like, you said that wrong. You're right. I don't, you know, I do. <laughs> You're um, learning. I'm learning still. I'm sure like my language choices are not always the best. I'm gonna reiterate rule one, which is please don't litter the comments with like but what happened with like questions about things i didn't talk about i'm not talking about them for a reason if you have clarifying questions about things i talked about then that you know is a little different but if you want to compliment her boobs comment away if you want to be like look at those titties look at their boobies look at their titties uh that's fine too okay. if you're like an indigenous person you want to be like what's up you know friend me be like, hey, on Twitter. Especially if you're Haudenosaunee or like Seneca or Cayuga, like, what's up, you know, people of the longhouse, how you doing? I'm trying to learn more the language, I'm trying to learn more of the culture, I'm trying to just like absorb as much as I can. You know, it's a process. I'm just happy to be here. I feel more fulfilled. I feel like I'm doing my ancestors proud because like they deserve to live on in you, me, which I know sounds really self absorbed, but if I can help them live on in me, then I'm doing a good job, I guess. Thanks for being a friend and thanks, hanging out. Thanks for having me. Thanks for, you know, talking about, talking it. about it. That's the, that's the video. We the video. Please. Don't you know. be f it up or we'll come after you. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> I'll get you. 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 I'm hungry. Okay, yeah, you look, yeah, <laughs> okay, you're a chicken. <laughs> Let's go eat chicken.